and welcome to the Ambition Hour Podcast. It's your girl, Adi3000, and this is episode 44. <laughs> so I'm alone today, guys, but it is okay. We got this. We know how to do this, you guys. It's been a minute since I've actually did done an episode by myself. Um, Hav is, you know living life in Orlando. Um, And I just want to say thank you to everybody who has tuned in to any episode of the Ambition Hour podcast. And thank you for tuning in today. How is your Saturday going? It is WTW Saturday, so we have to spend it together like a family um, because that's what WTW Saturdays are. We drop a new video, a new song, and a new podcast. This week, I'm so excited to announce the video that we dropped today, which um, the video is um, Clockwork by Laidback Sosa. And then the song that we dropped today is also by Laidback Sosa. It's called Conscience Too Lost. And so you make sure that you go ahead and tune into WTW Radio. That's our SoundCloud. And um, WTW TV, which is what you're on if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're listening to us on SoundCloud or Apple Music, thank you so much. We appreciate you with all of our hearts. Um, and I want to go ahead and invite you guys to join the Dub T Dub family. So you might ask yourself, how do I join the Dub T Dub family? Well, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button, but also hit the notification bell on the side. That way, you know each and every single time that we drop a new video or a new podcast, as well as Dub T Dub Radio on SoundCloud. Make sure that you go ahead and follow us. That way, every time that we drop something, you know as well. The same goes for Apple. Um, so thank you to everybody. Um, like I said, um, how was your guys' week? My week was pretty eventful, um, I may say. A lot of new exciting things are happening, um, not just in the podcast, but in my um, professional life at work. And so I'm really excited because I'm just starting to see myself evolve into a stronger, more powerful woman that isn't afraid to take chances and isn't afraid to just, you know, be a boss queen like, you know, she is. Um, how was, you know, how, how was your work week this, this week? Did you um, feel like you were, you know, maybe a little depressed? Do you feel like maybe this week you didn't do your best? Um, how are you feeling about this week? Remember, you can always um, correct the things that you weren't um, uh, happy with this past week. And all you have to do is just kind of like shift your mindset and kind of like refocus on what it is that you genuinely want to do. And not just what you want to do, but the attitude that you want to have you know, for the rest of 2018, I'm sorry, I'm already excited for 2019. It's literally around the block. It's already December 1st. Shout out. Shout out to all the December babies. Happy birthday. I'm saying it now because I won't be able to say it later. Um, so shout out to you guys. Happy birthday. This is the last month of 2018. I'm so excited because hello, it's the end of the year. That means a new year is coming. That means new goals. That means we're going to meet new people. That means so many new possibilities. And I'm so excited. I hate to be like a new year person, but um. I mean, not what, why, I mean, why not be though? You know what I mean? Like, uh, I genuinely love a new year. I love new beginnings. I love just new things. Life is all about new stuff. Like, if you're always going through the same old shit, nobody wants to, you know, be around for that. Um, so I'm really, um, Oh, and if you haven't gone to our website, which is basically the one-stop shop, all, T- all dub T dub, um, it's wtwrecords.com. You'll be able to find merchandise there, um, episodes of the Ambition Hour podcast, as well as the videos that we drop in some of the boys' projects. Shout out to Layback Sosa, Hav, and Spitz. Also, CAB. I know Duce, um, what is it? Duce Coladas? Pina Coladas? That song is bomb. It, we had, when CAB came through, we, we played that song. Um, that song just made it onto Apple Music, so shout out to that song for being on Apple Music. I'm so excited. Um, this week a lot of interesting things happen. Um, like I said, per, um, personally, I've been, you know, g- going through a growing season. I finished the book of 28 Days of Soul Coaching, and so many things have happened. I'm gonna get into, into something that kind of happened a little later, so make sure that you tune into the rest of today's episode. I'm really excited because, um, a couple of projects have dropped this week. Um, we have a new Meek album, <laughs> we got a little Baby album, we have a Trey Songs and a Danny uh, Lay album um which i'm going to be talking a little bit more about the meek and the danny lay album just because both al- albums i've heard in their entirety and i'm feeling them 
Um, and so because Meek has dropped a you know a project that's called Championships, um, it has a couple of features in there which we'll be getting into a little later. But one of them was from Jay Z. Now you know that Jay Z is one of my top five favorite rappers, so I have to talk about him because hello, <laughs> love me some Jay Z. And so pretty much what um there's a song that uh. Jay Z has on Meek Mill's album with Rick Ross. So it's Meek Mill, Rick Ross, and Jay Z, and this song is called um, "What's New." No, "What's Free," I, bro. I did it again. Somebody helped me yesterday. Um, like correct myself when I said the the wrong name of the song, and, <laughs> and I still got it wrong again. But it's um, it's called "What's." free and it's by jay like i said it's me jay-z um and rick ross now there's a couple of bars in this song that um kind of like people are interpreting it as you know jay um throwing shade towards kanye which i don't really um blame the internet for feeling that way because uh, number one the internet's always reaching they're always trying to uh, they're always trying to find something wrong with what someone is saying it is what it is it's the it's it's it's, um the environment and the the world that we live in today where stuff like that happens and it's just it it is what it is so uh jay-z responded and he said um the line clearly meant don't put me against my brothers no matter what our differences are Red hat. That's what he's talking about in the song. I'm gonna read the verse a little bit, right? Uh, a little bit. Um, now go pick up Meek album Drake and Meek on there together, which is amazing. Drake and Meek. That song is bomb, by the way. Um, and so Kanye decided to write back a little tweet and said "Throne Two with the shrugs emoji, and that just gave me so much life because I loved Watch the Throne and saw Watch the Throne in concert. So I am here for a uh, Watch the Throne Two. Even though some other people may not, shit, Jay might not be, you know, with the, with the shits about, <laughs> about, um, about having, you know, a Watch the Throne too. I'm trying to find the lyrics to this song, whether or not, okay. Of course, Genius has them, like, it's the first thing. So we're gonna, I'm gonna pull up, um, let's see, Jay-Z chorus. Um, Rick Ross's part is very good too, but I've been noticing that the Jay-Z verse has been getting a lot more recognition. So it starts off with, in the land of the free, where the blacks enslaved, three-fifths of a man, I believe the phrase, I'm 50% of Duce and is debt-free, 100% of Ace of Spades, worth half a B. Rock Nation, half of that, that's my piece. 100% of Title Two busted up with my G's. Uh, mm. <laughs> Since most of my homies won't ever work together, you run a check up, but they never give you leverage. No red hat, don't Michael and Prince me and yay. They separate you when you got Michael and Prince's DNA. Uh, I ain't got one of these house homies you bought. My house like a resort, my house bigger than yours. My spouse, my spouse. Come on, man. My route better, of course. We started out with no food in our mouth. So, um, the the ver- the rest of the verse just goes into you know like what Jigga goes into, and it's a bomb verse. But those are the ones that I, I'm specifically talking about because that's the one that he is, as you can hear, talking about Kanye West in here. But so the question is raised. So I have a couple of questions. Is he, is he, is he directly like making it um that he doesn't really um like other people cannot compare to what he has and i don't just mean i don't feel that he's just speaking to kanye west in one of the lines where he's just kind of like my spouse because um there are some other men in the entertainment industry especially in hip-hop that their wives are probably not they're not beyonce let's face it a lot of us are not beyonce a lot of us want to be beyonce but we're not beyonce beyonce is beyonce you know i'm me you're you and so that was something that i kind of like took i didn't take it as him really like bashing on kanye except when he said the thing about the red hat and also like how they try to put prince and michael like who has prince and michael's dna and as you guys know both prince and michael um jackson are african-american so when they say um you know have their dna it's just like they're trying to put two black men against each other pretty much which is very interesting and not a lie because um i don't see it as much maybe in the in the black community but i do see it in just in a woman that's the one that i can speak for is the woman um like the woman community and just like how it is how like two women cannot just be they have to be pinned against each other for some reason which is bizarre to me but 
it, it just goes hand in hand with that. You know, it, it just goes hand in hand to what he's speaking about, about how like it's just like we can't just be too normal black men doing music it has to be like you know we're against each other and they're just putting people they're just putting them to um against each other which at the end of the day that's what uh that's what the entertainment wants it's entertainment like it's only entertainment damn that's from a jigga song i love that song um so like i said i'm here for a watch the throne 2 let me know in the comment section if you're down for a a a watch the throne 2 another kanye and jay-z project like don't get me wrong everything is love was an is an amazing album um, but I'm here for a, you know, Jay-Z and Kanye collab once again. And so, like I said, Meek Mill dropped an album, Lil Baby dropped an album, Trey Songs and Danny Lay. I'm not going to get into every single one. I just said the two that I was going to get into. Um, but, uh, Sweetie also dropped a new song called Why You Pissed. And one of the things that I saw that I thought was funny was that she has like a Spotify thing. And it was just like, call me to tell me why you pissed. And then she put a phone number. And I was reading the comment section and people were saying like, man, I really called you. <laughs> and I guess it's like an automated system. So you don't really get to talk to Sweetie, but you get to hear her voice and you get to kind of like express why you pissed. So shout out to Sweetie for doing that because I feel like it's more of an engagement. It's, it's kind of like a lot of people are like, oh man, a phone number. Like people don't really call people like that. So for her to kind of like make people kind of call this number to kind of, I guess, talk to her, it was pretty cool. Um, Lil Baby dropped a project. I got to see an interview that he did with Angie Martinez and uh, I got to hear him speak and I thought that it was so good. He has a really good head on his shoulders. At least now he does. Um, I understand that he didn't always have that kind of um that kind of mindset before but you know we all grow and we all grow into better versions of ourselves if we choose to so i'm just very happy for him and then all of i wish him nothing but the success i'm going to be listening to the album this week i haven't been able to stop listening to the meek album which i'm getting into i'm excited uh so i like little baby that's i named my car that little baby um if you didn't know i got a car like i was carless for i would say around two years and thankfully, I have an amazing family who let me borrow their cars, who would take me wherever I needed to go. Um, but this past month, I actually got my own car. So I'm really excited. I'm really blessed. So I've been listening to a lot of more tracks and more songs in the car because I'm the DJ now. You know what I mean? Like no one can, no one can like, you know, take my Bluetooth or whatnot. Um, but yeah, so... I named my car Lil Baby. Um, I'm going to be listening to the album. And I just like him. I don't know. I, I liked his voice. I like it on Drip Too Hard. And then the other song that he has with Young Thug. And he's really into, like, putting, like, his whole team on and kind of, and, and like, empowering the people around him, which I think is very important in the hip-hop industry. So shout-out to Lil Baby. Um, also, Trey Songz dropped an album. I didn't get to hear it. I heard about it from Hav. Shout-out to Hav. He's my audiovisual. And also my little brother, but he he's not here today. Um, and... Yeah, so Trey Songs, I've been listening to him since I was in high school. So I know that project is good. Like it's trigger. <laughs> like it's trigger Trey. Like there's no re there's no way that it's not gonna be good. Um, and so the Danny Lay album as well. Um I really got into her because um she did an interview with Angie Martinez and I generally what i do is i do like a uh angie martinez show binge like on fridays and i kind of just like get all of not all of the information but that's how i find out about artists like she's who i go to to learn about artists because she's not looking for gossip she's looking for answers on like how are you who are you um why are you you know doing this or you know like the the, the all the w's or you know like she's asking like all the correct questions and politically correct questions so i always watch her so danny lay was on there and i got to find out that she's from miami um, she was born in Miami. Um, her parents owned a restaurant here, um, a Dominican restaurant. She's Dominican, so she's a Latina. Hello. Um, she was one of the one of the girls that had like one of the best Shiggy Challenge videos, and it like went the most viral. She was talking about how she gained almost a hundred thousand followers. I think she said two hundred thousand, but don't quote me. It's either one. It's either or. Um, and she gained it in like one day off of that video that I'm still regret not having done it. Now I feel like if I do it, it's like, I'm way too late for that. And, um, you know, it might, it, the, I, I missed the train. It's okay. I got the next one though. Um, but yeah, so she started off as a dancer and what I thought was cool was that 
her mom um, decided to move to L.A. when she kind of like when when Danny was deciding to kind of like take dancing a little bit more seriously and they were just going to live there for like a month or so. And they ended up living there for nine years. She's been she's been able to work with Prince um, and she's just backup dance for different artists. She was just on tour with Tiana Taylor. And I thought that was so empowering. I was just like, yes, girl, tú eres dominicana, tú, eres, tú estás ahí, you know, <laughs> haciendo moves. And I, I was just, I was just so excited, like, to see that representation of a Latina woman in, like, the hip-hop industry. She signed to Def Jam. And I was just like, yes, they got my, they got themselves, a, you know, a Latina woman representing. And she's from Miami. She's from down here. She has also lived in Orlando and L.A. But uh, I was just, like, I just loved her. I listened to her entire album. She has a song in Spanish called Yo No Se. And that one is featuring her brother's bills. Um, I thought that was amazing. It automatically made me think of me and Hav. Everything that it is that we are building as brother and sister. And so when I got to hear that song, I was just like, oh my God. It was the she has the song is all in Spanish. And I thought that it was so cool that, you know, that, you know, both of them got on a track. They, you know, they did their thing because, you know, her she comes from a family of um, you know, entertainers. And so I loved that. Another thing that I loved about her is that she's like doing all of this for her family. And I'm like, yes, girl, I am also too doing it for my family. So I wish her nothing but success. I see her spirit and I just, I'm so attracted to it. And I'm so like, like, I just want it more just because like, she's just so happy and free and she's nice. And, um, I know that just from listening to the entire album, I know that she's going to have a very good career. Um, if she just stays focused, baby girl, stay focused on the goals, mind your business and drink your water. <laughs> um, and so, uh, okay, so our basil is this week. Um, in Miami, if you guys didn't know, if you're not from here in Miami, we do have a week once a year. And it's our, I don't know if it's basil or basil. I like need help when it comes to that but um yeah so this week it kicks off it kicks off on wednesday i'm really excited because i decided this year you know what i'm gonna do this year i am going to be searching for hip-hop art that's like my goal this year so that's what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be going to different events i'm going to be sharing all the events that i'm going to be going to um and my whole thing was just like, I just want to look at hip hop art. I want to see graffiti. I want to see like Biggie post, like Biggie paintings, Tupac paintings, Wu Tang paintings. I want to see it all. So what I did was that I signed up. Well, I got tickets to hip hop painting events that were going on. One of them is the Urban Soul Experience, which I'm really excited about. And then there's another one called Now or Neverland, which is the Ode to Hip Hop. And hello, I thought that that when I found out about that, um. That event, the Ode to Hip Hop one, I was just like, now, you know I gotta go to this because we had episode 30 of the Ambition Hour podcast, which was the Ode to Hip Hop. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm trying to see if I can pull up information about the event. Let me see if we go to the website. Okay, maybe not. It's okay. Okay. All I know is that I'm going to be looking at some dope art um, and it's dedicated to hip hop music. So it's going to be something that I'm definitely going to be talking about next week, Saturday. Um, I'm really excited about that. I'm going to the opening night of that one. I also have the Red Dot event. Um, I went to that one last year and that one was pretty dope. Um, it's always cool to see, um, I have, I don't, I don't have it with me at home. I have it on my desk at work and it's like a biggie picture that I got from that, um, that, that event last year so i'm really excited for that one um so it's you know it's one that i've already gone to that i'm revisiting and then the other one is which is the urban soul experience um as you can see like i i look for that um that market because that's what i like the urban like you know urban soul experience because uh, usually that means hip-hop <laughs> hip-hop graffiti you know there's gonna be a dope dj there usually um and it's just it's like you know just like cool stuff like that you know so i i felt like i was just like this is my city this is you know um one of the biggest you know weeks in miami um why not surround myself around people that you know are into the same things as me so if you're gonna be going to our basel art basel 
Um, first, please tell me how you say it. And second, let your girl know. We can hang out. We, I got tickets to the to the Now or Neverland. Um, I got extra tickets to that. So if you want to go and you're in the Miami area, um, hit be, um, comment below or DM me. If you're not following me on Instagram, follow me. I'm Audi Ambition. And the Ambition Hour podcast also has their own Instagram, which is the Ambition. The, I can't even talk. The Ambition Hour podcast. <laughs> That's on IG. Mine is Audi Ambition, A U D I A M B I T I O N. Right, right, right. Um, and so, yes, I'm really excited. I'm going to be talking about that next week. I'm also going to be looking for Latino artists. So, I'm going to be looking at names a lot more um, this time around just because I want to know, like, Okay, so who is the artist? Oh, okay, so this was a Latina artist or a Latino artist. So I'm going to be looking for out for y'all as well. So this past week, um, I have a co-worker, shout out to Gabs, um, who is obsessed with Mariah Carey. This man will die for this woman. He would, uh, you know, take down whoever he needs to take down for some Mariah Carey. I don't blame him. Mariah's a very good uh, um, artist. She also dropped a project, which I really should listen to as well. Um, it's... um. It's called Caution, and she was doing, like, interview runs, and I got to see one of the interviews that she did with DJ Sus one, and that one was pretty, like, I love seeing old, like, not older artists, but artists that have been around for a long time, that have long careers. I love seeing them um, do interviews, and not just, like, interviews with anybody, like, interviews with, you know, people that they know, that they have a relationship with, that they have shared common, you know, events with. I just feel like it's just a lot more authentic. Um, so what's funny is that we ended up finding out that one of her albums named Glitter went viral. Like it went, it like went top of the charts or something like that, which was crazy. Glitter, if you don't remember Glitter, Glitter is the movie that Mariah Carey came out with a couple of years ago. I'm not sure the date, but she did come out with a movie. It was loosely based on some singer's life (laughs) because that's what it was about um she played a singer in the you know as a singer who you know finds a guy falls in love with him and then he's bad to her and then she's like has to get out and you know like i don't understand why it can't just be like she was just a bomb ass girl who could sing her fucking heart out and made it to the big leagues and just dominated no it can never be like that (laughs) Why, Hollywood? Why? Why can't we have a representation like that? Anywho, so the album went um, viral, and it was because a cu- um, a, cu- uh, a fan of Mariah's who listens to every single album leading up to the date of the release of her new album. So, for example, um, like that's as if I were to listen to Jay-Z's entire collection before his new project dropped. So that's what he did. He has like a calendar of you know okay so on this day i'm gonna listen to this album on this day i'm gonna listen to this album and this day i'm gonna listen to the and then this is the day that the album drops the new album so that way you're kind of like you've heard every single song that she's ever come out with uh, leading into the album so one of the albums that was on the calendar was glitter so since it was on the calendar it went viral that that you know that week um and it's funny because um one of the things that i read was basically like um people associate the song with I mean, the soundtrack with the movie. And a lot of people didn't really care for the movie. So it was kind of like, I don't know if I really want to listen to the album because the movie was kind of not good. I saw the movie, saw this, liked this, loved the, the, the album. The album was dope. I had it and I would play. I had the one that there was just a single. And then I think, I don't know if I ever got like the full version, but I know that there was one song on there that I freaking loved. Um, I love that. I love, I always love, I feel like that's such a cool idea. I feel like next time that Jay-Z or somebody else comes out with an album that I really like and they have multiple projects that I should definitely do that because why not? Um, we're going to be going into another, an album that has already dropped. Um, and so before I get into the album, I want to share, um, how I feel about this album even dropping. So one of the things that I feel about this album dropping, number one, it's a Meek Mill album, the championship um, album. And a part of me is just like, am I going to listen to this album because, you know, he got out of jail and because I feel like he has something to say or is it because he's just a good rapper? So I had so many questions that were raised in my like, like, are people really li- just listening to it because, you know, um, 
I don't know because I'm so conflicted. It, it, I'm trying to like um say exactly what it is that I was thinking, um without being like insensitive, um because I don't want to hurt anybody or I don't want to like maybe say something that I don't really feel. So pretty much what I'm seeing is people are giving him so much love because for what he stands for and because you know he went to jail for wrong reasons and because he just stands for so much and so i wonder if that's the reason why this album is so highly anticipated like you know is it just because he was in jail and he was wrongfully accused and you know he had a judge who was out to get him and you know he has a story to tell like is it mainly just because of that is it are we so infatuated with the idea of a man going to jail coming out of jail coming like you know um becoming into his own person and you know like you, you know hitting number one in the charts after he gets out of jail i love that i i feel like that is something that's one of the reasons why i listen to the album because it's just like okay this guy was wrongfully accused for the crime that he didn't commit he was in jail for five months um that means that he was not making the money that he needed to make to feed his you know like at the end of the day like when you're in jail you can't be working like what are you going to be doing? Like, you, can, you can't be working. Like, you can be writing. You can express yourself. Um, I've been a Meek Mill fan since... The, I've seen him, like... Meek was, like, literally as far as probably the camera is for me. Um, that's how close I've been to Meek Mill, at least in concert. And so... Um, I, I hope that people are really listening to this album because they see somebody who is standing for something and who is not just defending himself, but he's defending all of these men that have been wrongfully accused and have been unfortunately put into the judicial system and are in jail. And, you know, it's kind of like the modern, modern day form of slavery. And it just, it, there, there's just so much, um, like heat in this one album. And that's something that just even listening to it and, you know, not being, um, like, you know, being a Latina, you know, and I don't always see that. Like, I don't always see how, um, you know, black men are wrongfully accused. I don't see that as well, just because of where I'm from in Miami. It's, I've never really seen any p police brutality or maybe the whole, um, like wrongfully accusing somebody of something, but I've never really seen, that's never been a, cons a constant in my life. So um, for me to see it in the hip hop industry and kind of like show me like how ar what even artists have to go through, you know what I mean? Because uh, just because the people that I know <laughs> um, aren't public and aren't like out there with what it is that they have done in their life. Like, I don't know. I just felt like I wonder why people are really listening to this album. Are they listening to it just because of out of sympathy or are they really listening to it out of passion and out of knowing that this young man has, a, I say young man because I think I'm pretty sure he's younger than me. So he's a young man to me. <laughs> and so I just, I, I, I'm really hoping that people are listening to this album um, with, um, with, with the mindset, with an open mindset to try to learn. And I feel like that's something that I, out of listening from just listening to the album, I felt like I just learned so much about, you know, being in Philly, living in Philly, living in, you know, uh, in the projects or even like getting to understand like just the different dynamics of, um, of music that is being made and, I, I just, I love, I'm really happy that he dropped this album and I, he's been on a press run. I've been seeing a couple of his interviews and I just feel like, you know, he's really, you know, he's, he's the face of, you know, prison reform. And I hope that with what he unfortunately went through, he takes that and he helps as many people as possible. Um, and so the album has two songs with Spanish in them. What? That's exciting. I'm really excited about that. As soon as I hear Spanish, as soon as I hear Spanish everywhere, I'm all over it. I love it. Um, Anuel Doble A is in it, and Meli is also in it. Um, Meli comes from Spanish Harlem. Anuel Doble A, I'm pretty sure, is Puerto Rican. I'm not too familiar with either one of them. I just know that they're both Latinos. They both went on to this this album and were, you know, they were talking in Spanish, and I fucking loved it. If you saw my my Instagram this past week, you saw that I'm practicing my Spanish a little bit. Estoy practicando. 
porque necesito hablar más español. Un día que quisiera hacer una entrevista en español. Vamos a ver a quién puedo entrevistar en español. Um, van a tener que ser pacientes conmigo porque mi español no es tan perfecto. Algunas veces digo palabras en español, algunas veces en inglés. Pero estoy viendo una novela que me tiene como que practicando un poquito. Y también con mi trabajo, solo aprendiendo bastantes palabras en español. So, el cantante Anuel AA está en el álbum de Meek Mill. Y me encanta porque me encanta solo saber que la gente que está haciendo música latina también se mete en la música urbana um, americana. Porque eso significa que a ellos no le dan miedo de estar en las canciones de hip hop. Porque um, el reggaetón y el dembow... Y um, el Spanish Trap todo viene de, de lo que es de hip hop. Son like branches de lo que es hip hop. So que él tenga a Noel AA y a la artista Melly. Me encantó porque oír el, el lenguaje de uno es bonito. So me encanta que Mick Mill hizo eso en este proyecto. Um, and he also has Rick Ross, Jay-Z, 21 Savage, Future, Drake, Fabulous, uh, Roddy Rich, Young Thug, Kodak Black, Ella May, Jeremiah, PNB Rock, Cardi B. Um, something that I did notice was that eight out of the 19 songs have features in them. I'm not, I don't really care if you have a million features because you're just trying to get the whole team on. I was just wondering if... How do other people feel about having that many features on a 19-track album? To me, I'm very just... I'm just grateful that I get a project from anybody. I don't care who it is. <laughs> I don't care. I really don't. I'm, like, not tripping about anything, especially because I know he has, like, a couple of Spanish artists. I mean, there you go again, Spanish. Um, he, that he has, um, you know... He has a variety of artists on here, you know, and then on some of them, he has two people in one song. So I feel like that's smart. You know, there's there's a there's a way to do features and that it's not too overwhelming. And then there's also a way to do features that is just like every single song is a feature or that's like the main core of the of the of the project. Um, one of my favorite songs is the Uptown Vibe song is featuring Fabulous and Anuel AA. The What's Free song as well. Um, I was talking to my coworker and she was saying that she didn't really care for the the one with Future, which is Splash Warning. But I kind of liked it. I feel like any song that I feel like I could twerk to, I'm with it. Um, one of the songs, and I also like Oodles and Noodles. Oodles and Noodles, babies. Um, I also love Dangerous. I listen to that song every single, I don't know, I love it. It has a lyric in there that I'm just obsessed with. Um, and then the one with Drake going bad is dope as well. There's um, a couple of other tracks on there. I like Cold Hearted too. Um, he's kind of speaking on that one. And he's kind of like spinning some bars, like some truth. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull it up so I can get these lyrics real quick. So um, he's just kind of like, I'm going to just read um, real quick from what I see here. Um, to see some of my closest friends turn their back on me about that attention needing or a green piece of paper with the slave master on the front of that shit. I used to hear homies, homies. I was feeding. I heard them whispering, Meek Mill finished. I was like, damn, I was feeding you, bro. All I did was keep grinding through the storm. I'm like Derek Rose on a 50 point homie on a daily basis, homie, for the love of the millions. Royalty over loyalty. Never get it confused. I got real friends and family that will never turn their back on me for the love of money. I got a homie that's doing life. He can't offer me no money. He can't offer me nothing but a friendship and a relationship. I talk to him seven days a week. And so... Um, cause it's like I said, he, he kind of like speaks that and I, Meek, you did a good album and I'm happy that I got to listen to it. I like listened to it when it first dropped at 12 o'clock. I love that that happens now that you don't have to go to a store or anything and buy it. You can just like listen to it on your phone. And I think that that's awesome. Um, and yeah, and then this is the first, um, time that we hear Drake and Meek, um, together again, which I think is always good because why the fuck not is it good to have Meek and Drake, you know, on a track together? I feel like that's just so important and I feel like why not? Um, and so 
We have a couple of new videos this week. Ariana Grande dropped one called Thank You Next. And now this one, is, this video is hilarious, first of all. I found out about it when I was at work. I didn't watch it until the nighttime. And then I also watched something that they were talking about it that was like, um, <laughs> that they were kind of like pinpointing some of the things. Chris Jenner is in the video. Lindsay Lohan is in the video. And they're kind of like um, doing like, they're like remaking like movies from back in the day. Like they have Mean Girls, they have Legally Blonde, they have um, 13 Going on 30. Uh, I'm not sure the other movies that they have, but um, Ariana Grande did just such an amazing job on recreating these movies. And it's kind of like, um, I love the lyrics to this song because it's kind of like an ode to an ex, which I'm going to be talking about a little later. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, um, like just like, you know, kind of like, thank you, next, like, uh can i you know thank you for your time i appreciate you so much next <laughs> and i just like the video i love the video i love the song um shout out to her and then Nicki minaj also dropped a song i mean a video with little wayne called good form i saw this video and i just want to share something that i think is hilarious so there's two girls in this video and they're like twins or something like that. They're sisters. And those two girls in this Nikki video um, are the same girls that Cardi um, was fighting not too long ago in New York City. So I find that a little shady. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. It's a little... <laughs> It's a little shady, but I also do not mind a little bit of shade because, I mean, if y'all not going to like each other, really not like each other. But um, we talked to I went to this event today called um, Feel Free to Be Yourself. Um, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later, but they it was funny because they brought up the whole Nikki Cardi beef and how why is it that two women why is it that they're pinning two women against each other and why can't they just both exist in hip hop and both, you know, because if you see like um, in the rap industry, you see a lot of men all, you know, being number one and it's OK. And it's just like, all right, I'll be number one this week. You can be number one next week. But then it's like, why is this such a hard time for the women to get it? Like, why is it that they can't just work together? And so it was just cool that they bring that up at this event that I was at. That was about empowerment and women empowerment and so many awesome things um, that I'm definitely going to be sharing with you guys in a little later um but yeah so nikki dropped that video um it was cool i like little wayne's part a lot like i like his verse the video i don't really care for um i just wanted to share it because of that the cardi part of the twins or whatnot i thought that was hilarious and i thought that um yeah i like shade like i'm not, i'm gonna say it like one of my favorite things about you know these little beefs i don't care for them i don't like them i don't support them but I like a little shade, okay? I like to throw it. I like to have to catch it because, you know, if you got to throw it, you got to catch it. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> I am just saying because I've gotten some shade. I done gave some shade. It's okay. This is life. Um, and so today, um, I went to this thing called feel free to be yourself. And this was kind of like to open up my our Basel week, our Basel week. Um, and I loved it. Um, because they had, okay, first they had like a flower crown sec, um, section. So where you can get like a nice little flower crown. Then they had, um, that they were doing like a breeding station and then they had, um, these pretty cool bottles yeah. and then they put your name on them. And I was just so excited because, um, I had seen the person who owns this. I saw their name on the flyer and I saw the name and I'm like, I know this person. Like there's, there's, there can be only one of this, you know, like it's going to be the only one. Like, uh, the <laughs> and it was funny because when I get there, um, her boyfriend is the one who's at the, at the booth. So then when I, um, go back and I see her and I'm like, oh my God, I knew it was you. There's only one, you know, um, her name is Kelsey Valencia and I'm like, there's only one Kelsey Valencia. I can't believe it. I'm so excited to see you. We got to, ch we got to talk, we got to catch up and I'm so happy because she's doing like calligraphy and she did this for the event. So she gave this to everybody. We also got a goodie bag. Um, there was the panel, the, the main reason why I went was because there was a panel and 
on the panel was somebody that I went to high school with. Now, I haven't really, um, I can't sit here and be like, yo, we've been like BFF since we graduated high school. No, it's actually just, um, she has supported, you know, me when I was doing Herbalife and she just, she just stands for so much that I love. So when I saw that she was doing this event, I was just like, I have to just not just show my support, but also invest my time into something that's going to put, make me and um, my brand a lot better and kind of like, push what it is that I'm doing forward because at the end of the day that's what I want to do I do consider myself a businesswoman I do consider the ambition of our podcast a business because at the end of the day this is when this is something that one day I'm going to be making revenue off of and you know I speak like this and I speak these things into existence because I feel like it's so very necessary for what it is that I'm doing for what it is that I try to teach you guys because I always try to teach you guys if it's not about equality if it's not about something about hip-hop one of the things that I want to teach you is hope is faith is that you can truly just chase your passion and just go after what it is that you want to do without anybody really like getting in your way because a lot of the times it's not people that are in our way it's us that are in our way so um that's something that one of the panelists said and so Danielle Alvarez she is the founder of the Bonita Project which uh i'm get. i need a shirt for because shout out to that i'm so excited she's a p she has her own pr firm she was working at a company for like maybe seven years and then now she's doing this she has her own she has her own clients uh, making a really big name for herself and i'm just so proud of her and just to even say that i went to the same high school as her is just is awesome because you know i just want to see her be happy and chase her dream and you know do what it is that she wants to do um and so the panel was beautiful there were all of the women were entrepreneurs they got asked certain questions and I just felt so empowered just being there there was a room full of women there was free food which I was not mad at because I'm where the food's at y'all gonna be giving food I'm with it invite me to the food I always want to eat they had awesome food um and it was part of like you know your entrance so that's even better like hello if you have events like that y'all need to invite me you can email me tickets you can eat oh, shoot i'll give you my personal email if it, if that's what it takes um but yeah so i just wanted to like share with you guys that event it was um the feel frida it's like frida the um, the painter the amazing feminist painter frida and um so it was kind of cute how and then like it was like this is like their logo i don't know if you guys can see it but this is like their logo so for the event so it was pretty cool um we got to ask questions i asked a question because i really wanted to know the answer from a woman and one of one the question that i had was how was it that i can bring in the conversation of bringing equality um in women in hip-hop like how can how, what kind of conversations do I need to be having? And so one of them was just kind of like um, saying like, um, you know, uh, telling them like, hey, you know, you sh like telling artists, I guess, to not really talk so much bad about women and to kind of not degrade them. And then the other one, which was Danielle answered, was pretty much like, um, you know, have conversation like get people's opinions and see how they feel about you know certain certain things that are going on um that are happening to women that way there's more like there, I, I want i want this podcast to be something that has like a, an open conversation about what not just happens in hip-hop but what happens with women what happens with women in hip-hop what happens with women in general the ones that are fighting for their lives the ones that are getting you know treated wrongfully in their workplace at home you know in their mind etc cetera, etc cetera. because i feel like i i need to have the these type of conversations here on the ambition hour podcast because i am a woman i am a latina woman i am a young i'm a you know i'm about to be 30 we talked about this last episode i'm not ashamed to say it and I just want to use this voice to be able to kind of just like make a point that as a woman, we can we women, ladies, we can be what we want to be. We have to stop holding back. We have to stop fighting the feeling of like or wanting and like or saying I'm not going to do this until I have this or not do that because I don't have that that and just like the, the, the way that we just beat ourselves up. I just want this podcast to be something that's just going to help you move past that and so this um 
this event was just so dope. I got to meet awesome women. You know, I got to meet like beauty bloggers, um, people who make their own, you know, accessories, um, people who do flower crowns, who are just influencers, who are travel bloggers. Uh, the, just dope shit. Like, I just thought that it was so cool to like see, like, especially in Miami. Like, it wasn't like somewhere I didn't travel like a couple of miles, like a, a couple of hours away. I literally, it was literally in Miami, Wynwood, like Miami, Miami Design District. Um, I don't live around there. Just for those of you that think that I live like maybe like, you know, in the hot spots of Miami, I don't. I live down south, damn near Homestead um basically i live in the suburbs so yeah uh <laughs> i live with there's a lot of homes the beach is very far like it's real up there it took me forever to find parking um yeah so and it was just cool to have an event that was you know close um and that i got to see danielle that i got to see um kelsey and i got to see both of them kind of exceeding in what it is because succeeding i am sorry succeeding in what it is that they are doing uh, I just thought that it was beautiful. And then all the awesome girls that were just around, I thought it was awesome. I can't wait until the next event. Shout out to the two girls that did it. I'm going to um, get their Instagrams real quick. Because why not? You know, let's shout these queens out. Like, I don't see a problem with that. So one of them is Mota Parla. Um, the other one is Chasing Carpe Diem. And I think they have, like, one of them is, she is, let's find out, what are you, girl? Her name is Jocelyn. Um, she's, it's like, a per, she's a blogger. Um, and the other girl, uh, why can't I find it? I, like, really suck at, like, being fast on my phone when I need to be. <laughs> um, she's the founder of Parla, um, Parla Pineapple. Um, she's a blogger as well. Um, it was just pretty cool, you know, to be, like I said, the event was feel free to, to be yourself. I, I don't know. I loved it. And I thought I was just like, I can't wait to share it with these people. I can't wait to share it with everybody on the Ambition Hour, on, on the Ambition Hour podcast. You guys see, can you see how excited I am? I can't even talk today. I am like, I, and it's so funny because my day did not go as I planned it to go. My, my goal today was to wake up at 7 a.m., and to have already recorded the Ambition Hour podcast, I would say, I said that I would record it at 8 o'clock. That way I can post up the audio before I go to the event. That did not happen because your girl woke up at 9.30. Hot mess. When they say that Miami people are late, I was one of them today. Um, for some reason, I didn't hear my alarm clock, so I did not wake up. So I ended up getting to the event late. <laughs> um... Rushing, but not so much because I know that I had to keep this face on all day. So I had to make sure that this face was popping all day. You know what I'm talking about? So I had to do my little tricks. I had to make sure that this was covered, you know, so that way when I got home, I had to do was just eat, get the set ready and then just give you guys my all. But I was just so excited. I'm like, I cannot wait to shoot the Ambition Hour podcast after, you know, being in a room full of these awesome women. I'm so excited. Like, I'm just so excited to be doing today's episode. Next week is episode 45. I can't even believe it. I'm like, my mind is blown. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am highly favored when I tell you I mean it. Um, and so this past week, um, I finished my 28 days of soul coaching. Bomb. Loved it. This is the fourth time that I've read this um, book. I've shared this with you guys that I've, this is like more than, I, I'm pretty sure I read this book more than once. I would say like four or five times. And I don't know, every single time something awesome happens. This time I also decided to be off of social media for the 28 days. I stopped a little earlier. I got on Instagram on Monday. My last day of the book was on Wednesday. So I went back on Instagram a couple of days early. But can you blame me? I missed Instagram. I, f I missed it. I wanted to know what was going on in people's lives, which I do think is kind of sad that we have to turn to social media for that. But it's just a reality that we live in. Because sometimes somebody will DM you. They'll have your number. But they will DM you before they, they text you. That is so crazy to me. Um, but that's just the world that we live in. Um, so yeah, just being back on Instagram was pretty cool. I'm finishing the 28 Days of Soul Coaching. I thought was amazing because um, this past month, so many awesome things have happened as well as bad things. And uh, some of those bad things, they have made me become a better woman at the end of November. That's why in December, I can come in with a clear mindset and kind of like 
uh, execute the rest of 2018 because of the November. So I've shared this with you guys before that on November, something always happens, something life changing, something, um, something life altering happens. Um, and one of those things, uh, I can't really share it right now, but I'm going to share it once the announcement is official, but I'm really excited because it means that I'm going to, I'm moving on up and your girl loves to move on up, you know, because moving on up means, um, that I'm just making myself proud. I'm able to support myself. I'm able to, um, pay what it is that I need to pay. Um, if you've listened to the podcast before, then you know that last year I was dead broke. Um, not in November, but I was dead broke. Like in October, I couldn't even buy a bottle of water if I wanted to. I had no, I didn't have a good job. I didn't have a job. Um, I was depressed. Uh, it was just, it was a, it was a time in my life that I would never, ever change. But when I tell you that it challenged me, it challenged me in ways that I never thought of that I would be challenged. But I am here today. I'm standing strong. Um, so the 20 days of soul coaching it just, just taught me so much and how I am with my uh, relationships and how the reason why I react the way that I react. And it's always good to kind of do like a self-assessment on your soul. And that's what the um, soul, soul coaching did for me. Um, one of the things that it did bring was I had a conversation with somebody that I needed to have a conversation with and that was my ex. Um, I had a very intellectual conversation with him um him and i dated a couple of more than five years ago and we dated for four years and so with him there was always a constant like we never really had that real closure um he wants to be my friend and i do not just because i associate pain with him not because he was a bad person but because the serum of the actions that I did when I was with him and some of the actions that he did um hurt me a lot um took me some time to like come back from that because th- that hurt was never resolved that hurt was never um it was also always put in the back burner because I would just always work out or I would like numb it out with something else with either my work or like Herbalife or you know just trying to be happy and trying to stay afloat so I never really had the opportunity to just dissect what it was that him and I had um because everything just changed so quickly when it came to us too so we were able to have this conversation and I liked it. So for those that um, are hesitant to maybe have a conversation with somebody that they feel isn't going to reciprocate the energy that they want to give to them, um, I, I think that you should just still like, you know, have that conversation because you never know what can come from having a conversation with somebody that maybe hurt you in the past, that possibly didn't treat you the way that you deserve to be treated. This is this is this is true life. This isn't like pretend I'm not like trying. I'm not going to tell you his name because that does, that's not important. But I'm. Th- this is real life. Like this is something that I go through. This is something that I know other people go through. That you have that ex that just won't let you go. And not because they want to be with you, but because they want to have what they used to have with you. I'm the type. I, I'm pretty sure this has been the question of the week already. Like, would you be friends with an ex? And I think some people said yes. I think some people said no. I would have to like, I think, you know what? I'm going to find it because I know I asked this question. Um. Okay. What would you, okay. Who got it? Okay. Who, um, so it just, um, it just go, goes back to that, you know, like, um, have having that conversation okay i'm ch- okay so it was for episode 30 that was the one that we had dj efn and i'm uh, pro we asked that question of the week and it was the o to hip hop and it was just like y'all know how i met her broke up and got back together and so 46 percent said yes and 54 percent said no like what to not get back with an ex and and like yeah like uh, get back with an ex but i'm not i'm not trying to get back with an ex and i'm not trying to be my friend friends with an ex because let's be real an ex is an ex for a reason unfortunately my ex wants to be my friend i know it's because i'm cool i know it's because you know do you stop me <laughs> um if he listens to this i'm not sorry <laughs> i am not sorry for what i'm saying um damn 
if you are watching this, if you want to talk, we can talk. It's okay. <laughs> but, you know, I just had to be real with him. I had to be honest with him. And I don't know. He might listen to this podcast. He might, you know, he might, it might happen. Um, and it's just, it, it was just an awesome conversation. So I really, really recommend for you to talk to somebody. It doesn't have to be your ex. It can be anybody who you have unresolved um, feelings with or unresolved issues with. Um, I feel like for us, it was a little mixture of both. It was kind of like unresolved feelings because of the way that I feel of now being friends with you and feel on how you treated me. And then also like in the relationship, because it's just kind of like, are we friends or what? We ain't friends though. Um, but yeah, so it's just like, it's important to have those conversations. This just turned into like something about my ex and then now, now I might get in trouble. <laughs> But it's okay. It's okay. I, I, I'm going to take it. That's something that that's something that I'm never going to shy away from is using my experiences, my pain, my hurt, um, my um, insecurities, my decisions and all of those things. That is something that I am never going to be afraid of sharing with you guys because I feel that if I can help the next woman or the next man go through something that I went through and kind of like, listen, like if I can do it, you could do it type of thing. You know, like we're all in this together. Like even when we're alone, we're all in it together. Um, and so, yeah, so that was, you know, the kind of week that I had having that conversation with him was, was something, like I said, that was definitely needed. Um, I'm really excited about what's to come. December is going to be a very lit month. We're going to be bringing some guests back on the show. I'm excited as fuck about that because I love having you guys to myself, but I also love hearing what people have to say. I want to do interviews. I want to, I'm, excuse me, I miss the interviews, but I'll, you see, the thing is, is that I just don't want the ambition of our podcast to be just like a whole bunch of interviews. And because then it just turns into a interview show. And I love to get to know local artists or local entrepreneurs or DJs or singers and all of that stuff. I love to I love that. But I also um, I also want to have a direct connection just with you guys to where I'm sharing, you know, what's going on in hip hop, the videos that are dropping, the the conversations about equality that we need to be having um, and just being fair in what it is that I say. Um, and I guess like that's just that's just been my goal this whole time, you know, that doing this podcast in the beginning, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when it came to the podcast. Um, at first we were just interviewing people and then it was, it, 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 it got to the point to where it was just like, we need to see what is going to take this podcast from just an interview podcast to the next level. Because that's what, it, listen, if you have met me in person, then you know that I'm all about next level shit. Why? Because I want my life to be next level. I want my podcast to be next level. I want this motherfucking label worth the weight records to be next level i want my brother's career to be next level i want my parents life to be next level like that's what it is like life is a constant like search for the next level because we got to keep leveling up so that was something that you know one of the things that i decided i was just like okay we're going to talk more about women empowerment we're going to have these conversations i'm going to put myself out there um today um danielle which was on the panel for the, the the event that i went to she shared how she's a proud feminist and i've never been able to say that i am a proud feminist so today i am going to be saying that i am a very proud feminist i'm very proud to be a woman i do feel that men and women equally should be treated equally they should be treated equally and not just men and women but the transgender community everybody like gay women gay men lesbians everybody we should all be treated equally we should not have to suffer because of the way that we look because the color of our skin what is in between our legs what is on our chest nothing because at the end of the day we're all humans and we're together in that as well so i'm saying here for the first time on the ambition our podcast that i am a proud feminist and um i don't want it to be like Cause I also don't want to sound like the girl that got hurt because that's also not something that's happened. I can't gen necessarily say that I've been the one who has gotten hurt. 
um, you know, by men and uh, I'm like traumatized. I've been respected by men for the majority of my life, thankfully, because I also make sure that I'm respected or like I just won't. I'm the type of person that I just won't talk to you. If I feel like you're not respecting me, we ain't cool no more. I'm sorry, because you got to give respect and get respect. If you ain't giving it, I ain't. I'm going to say hi to you, though. Just because my mom might watch this. So, you know, she raised, she ra- mom, you raised an awesome woman. Um, So make sure that you guys go ahead and check out the new video that we have, which is by Laidback Sosa, um, which is called Clockwork. And then make sure that you guys listen to the song that he dropped as well, which is called Conscience 2 Lost. Um, new song, new video out. Make sure you guys go ahead and check out all the projects that the boys have had out. Make sure that you stay tuned for more information about that La Vita E Bella, which is a Spitz's new project that's dropping. Um, I know CAB's working, have stay working. Like he just dropped a project. He might drop another one either by the year over or by the beginning of next year. And um, thank you so much for tuning into the Ambition Hour podcast. I invite you guys to next week's episode, which is going to be episode 45. Hello, hello. And I am so grateful because if you told me a year ago that we would be um, reaching 45 episodes of my podcast, I would have told you you're crazy. Ain't no way that's going to happen. And if you're following me on Instagram, then you know that I am practicing my Spanish. I have a goal for 2019, and that is to do an interview about hip hop or just an interview in general in Spanish. Um, And so, okay, so I'm going to do what I did on my Instagram. So, okay. Hola, mi, mi gente bella. ¿Cómo están? Yo me llamo Claudia también. Aquí en um, The Ambition Hour Podcast me llamo Audi 3000. Si ustedes me siguen en Instagram, saben que yo soy una latina. Soy bien orgullosa de ser latina. Um, estoy practicando el español porque, bueno, no es perfecto. Um, estoy nacida en los Estados Unidos, en California, pero mis padres los dos son nicaragüenses. So, entonces, hay que, you know... Use that to my advantage. <laughs> que soy una Latina. <laughs> and so, for, <laughs> well, no, now I feel like I just went like, you know, Spanish and I was like, bye, because <laughs> I got shy. Um, But yeah, so guys, just, just my goal is just, I, I just, I want to speak more Spanish and not just at work. I want to speak it outside. I want to speak it more with my mom. I want to speak it more with, um, like with just like an, I would love to do an interview in Spanish. So me encantaría hacer una entrevista en español. So si hay gente que le encanta la música de hip hop y quiere estar aquí en, el, en The Ambition Hour Podcast, me contactan a mí, me dicen, me mandan un mensaje para que hagamos ese, esa cosa, para que los dos, si necesita practicar, practiquemos juntos, ¿verdad? Entonces, for the 44th time in a row.